Welcome. This is Steve Shadrach, founder of Support Raising Solutions. This podcast is part of a 15-week series launching your first 100 days after boot camp. Today's episode is hosted by our friend, Aaron Babiar. Our guest today is Corey Guckenberger, who is with Back to Back Ministries. Corey has been actually a certified trainer with Support Raising Solutions since 2014, and she has helped oversee the training of around 250 staff. But personally, she has lived and well lived off of and raised support for 13 years and counting. So, yes. Corey, it's been a joy to develop a friendship with you over the past about four years or so. Yeah, absolutely. At Thank least you. at the time that we're recording this. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm super excited to have you with us today. And of course, the the email was really about time yes. and adding time to people's weeks. So mm-hmm. I understand you have figured out how to create more time. Is that, uh, you have a time machine? Like how, how are you doing that for people trying to raise support? <laughs> oh, yes. It's so easy just to create time out of everyone's busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us uh, a little bit about what you have done with Back to Back, uh, specifically in this area of of really helping people figure out the the whole rhythm and the flow and mm-hmm. and finding their time and, and all that stuff. Just unpack it for us, if you would, a little bit about what you have learned when it comes to this, this topic of adding time into your week. You know, one of the first things we realized as a staff, and I don't remember the session now in the boot camp itself, but it talks, it kind of breaks down the schedule of It's going to take approximately two face-to-face asks for one yes. And so if you have two face-to-face asks, you need to ask four people on the phone. Do you kind of remember that breakdown in boot camp and just going through the the dynamics of what that looks like? So I remember being in one boot camp and we just talked about 600 phone calls to get to 50 asks or 50 yeses. And one of the women stood up and she said, I quit. I quit. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Wow. Because she was overwhelmed with the reality of what it might mean to actually get fully funded. Mm. And so with that, our organization has kind of created a a sheet, basically, that they can punch in how many weeks. It's really the example that, again, you had in the boot camp. I'm not just trying to push it, but I love the boot camp. That's fine. But It's um, talked about in the God Ask as well. And we have the new product called Foundations that we're putting out there so people do stuff online. So people are coming across supporting solutions information in a number of ways. But really what you're talking about is the math, the the algorithm, if you will, of how long is it actually going to take you and what do you have to do to get to full funding? So this girl, when she quit, I sat down with her later and I said, why don't we just work through you and I personally what this looks like? And so we kind of worked through the numbers and we made something that felt immeasurably overwhelming to her. And all of a sudden it boiled down to 26 phone calls a week, you know, making sure she had those conversations. I think it boiled down to six asks a week and that she could understand and move forward. And Mm -hmm. her success story is, of course, she became fully funded and her and her family are now serving in our Mazatlan site. Praise the Lord. That's absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Have you found has that been uh, a significant issue for a lot of people? Because I know you've been training boot camps internally with back to back for almost four years now. Is that consistently something that trips people up when they become overwhelmed? They start thinking about how much time they actually have to put into it. Yes, almost everyone inevitably starts off with the idea of. I'll just add this to my agenda as as far as like a ticket item. You know, I've got my 10 things to do today. This Mm. is one of them. And so they start with that idea. And what we have seen consistently is just as time goes on, they become a little more overwhelmed Mm. and they can actually start harboring in a, in a pure way they don't mean to, but a little bit of bitterness and mm. some frustration actually towards the ministry mm-hmm. in which they were first called to. And so it's been a hard line to communicate, I'm not your mom, but you really have to step out of some things because mm-hmm. we've called you, you've been called, we've accepted that calling, we confirm it and we affirm it. So we need you to now make some time to step into it further because you are now joining our staff team. And now, this I'm, I'm going to interrupt part. you right there a little bit because there is... A really a, a, an issue. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and we're, I mean, this is just the second email people have gotten mm-hmm. you know, after they've gone through all this training and, and they're getting this. And right away, you're talking about people potentially ending up bitter and frustrated. Yes. And uh, I know we've even talked other times about that leading to a uh, uh, budget adjustment and not in the right direction and different yeah. things like that. What is that? I mean, it's, it's unpleasant to talk about, but I'm going to ask you to do it. What does that look like when, when somebody's not having the proper time or giving the proper time to making that work? How does that play out a little bit? Like share, share a story about that, if you would. Well, 
I, I think that it's a lot of honest conversations. And I think of myself as a coach stepping in earlier on and having that conversation. We have some of our international staff who kind of think, oh, when I come home, I'll just find people to meet with and I'll ask them for support. And that's just not the reality. And mm. so in some ways, we've had to set up some processes to help prevent wasted time and stewarding of resources in an unhealthy way. So what can appear harsh, like unless you have things already set up, we won't approve you to come home. Mm. That might feel harsh to someone, but the reality is it's because we want them to be secure and to be confirmed in their calling. And so we want them to feel like they've been able to step into something already planned. You know, they have a lot of things on their mind, and I kind of view my role as to help them organize that because some strengths are different, and I've learned to become stronger in this area. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for it. You know, the thing that I love about people who come on staff they're extremely hopeful. I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be so easy. The money's going to come in. I want to capture that hope and just help lean it in a direction of organization mm. because the hope you still want, right? That's the fresh, the, that's a fresh charisma of someone coming on staff with a new, a new perspective. And so I, I want that, mm. but with a little bit of a deeper rooting of an understanding in it. And so I yeah. kind of view our role in somewhat of that manner. And as people begin to understand, wow, this is going to take a lot of time. Yeah. Like, sure, it's going to take some administration and some record keeping and some some organizing and all that good stuff, but it's going to cost me hmm. time, lots and lots of hours of time. Yes. Um, if they don't capture that pretty early on in their support raising process, what, what tends to happen? Well, it's interesting. I can even speak to myself with that. If you don't start early on, and I tell you when they do and they form those patterns, it's a beautiful thing Yeah, because they go on staff and they are just sustainable. They are literally just sustainable where God has them. And it's it's so pleasant and so joyful. Mm. I can tell you for me, I did not learn these, these things early on. And so I remember one of the things that we talk about are scripts. And I remember thinking, oh, that's so silly. I'm not going to read from a script. And so I was making a phone call because I needed to gain more support. And you're probably in a rush. In a rush, and I just know I'm going to get voicemail. That's just what happens. So I pick up the phone call, and I didn't even think twice about it, and the woman answered the phone. Uh -oh. I was so caught off guard because I had not planned in my mental capacity for a conversation with someone. And so I stammered, and I oohed and awed, and I was like, um, um, which we all know you shouldn't do. And what I've learned from that, which, by the way, I ended up meeting with her, and she joined my team. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord no matter how. <laughs> exactly. But what I've learned is I need to write a few phrases down. If someone answers the phone, if someone doesn't answer the phone, if it goes to voicemail, I need to write some phrases so I don't get lost in the idea of what I'm doing and just mm -hmm. letting it flow more naturally. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I have to pull a guilty card on myself on this <laughs> one. I've done that too. Uh, and, and and to this day, uh, if I do need to make a call because I need to add a, a little portion to my support or something like that, I don't like to look at my script. Yes. The thing that I know that is wonderful, that is helpful, I mm -hmm. don't like to do it. And selfishly, it's because I don't like to take the time. Yeah, I don't like to take the time to organize myself, to go open the computer and go to the document where I have it saved and read and refresh my mind what what it is I'm looking to say, and in many cases with me, what not to say, yeah. Uh, but yeah. what, what I'm going to say when, when somebody answers the phone, because that's going to cost me a minute and a half or two minutes, and, and, I'm, and I'm lazy. I just want to make the phone call and wing it, and then... Yeah, same thing. And we almost get too big for our britches 13 years later. I made this mistake literally a year ago, and I know better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's, re it's always rehearsing and refreshing and being kept up on that skill set. Unpack the spiritual side of this a little bit too mm -hmm. when it comes to time, because I know that's a, that's a part of the, the problem why sometimes support raisers don't take proper time. Yeah, that's a big one for me right now, Aaron. I just went. I just did a 21 day fast. So I'm coming off fresh with a spiritual high. I'm telling wow. you this already, but I'm going to buy you a burger after this. Okay. Please. Yep. Thank you. I'd love that. <laughs> or that cookie I see. But, um, I decided I was pouring out all day, whether it's asking for support or training people to raise support. Mm -hmm. And I myself was becoming a little bit hard hearted towards this process. Mm -hmm. And the Lord really showed me, you need to actually spend another hour a day with me earlier. Because I kept thinking I would spend that time with the Lord prior. I'll do it before my phone calls. I'll do it before my coaching. And the truth is, there's always things that take the place of that. And it's usually relationship, which we love relationships. So sure. it always feels good in the moment. 
So I have actually gone the last 21 days, an extra 30 to 45 minutes extra in the morning, I'm waking up and I'm getting filled up. And then pouring out feels more of a natural overflow of him Mm -hmm. versus Corey trying to force something to happen. And I'm so grateful for that renewed lesson just in that self alone. And I can even tell you what I've seen is how people raise support can very often mirror how they do ministry when it's hard. Mm -hmm. We've seen it over and over again. And so it's been fun to kind of see people's knee-jerk responses in this process as I'm coaching them, that how they're handling things that are harder for them, those spiritual giants or those obstacles that we talk about, Mm -hmm. to see as they grow and mature and kind of exercise that faith muscle. That faith muscle is starting in that ministry partner development phase, but it continues on Mm -hmm. and very often goes deeper when they get on site, wherever that location may be. And so that's probably my favorite aspect of coaching is the whole spirit spiritual content of it. I love you brought up the word mature in there too, because I do think it takes some maturity to organize your time, Mm -hmm. even to the point of making sure that you are spiritually healthy. Yes. Making sure that you are spending time with Jesus. Because quite honestly, as a Christian ministry leader, I know better than to say, I don't have time to sit down and talk to Jesus. I know better. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I've probably preached a sermon why that's a bad idea at one point. (laughs) But Man, is it dysfunctional yeah. if it's if it's an advice I can give, but not an advice that I can model and live. Which is why I love that tagline with Support Raising Solutions, spiritually healthy comes first, right? Because mm-hmm. then the vision driven and the fully funded, the fully funded are kind of a, the fruit of being spiritually healthy first. Now, of course, we have things to do, which is why this this one is so important of adding time in our week. We have activity on our part to do, but we will find it actually more pouring out of us in a more natural environment Mm -hmm. by filling up with Jesus first. Yeah. And you know, when we take the time to do that Mm -hmm. and we don't see it as an interruption from our schedule, it's actually a time of our schedule. Personally, there's just something I think the Holy Spirit does where I don't don't want to say all my phone calls go perfect. I don't want to say all my appointments go perfect, but man, do they just feel right? Yes. Even when I sit down with someone and they start telling me, well, you know, in the Bible, Paul was a tent maker, so that's what you should do. And I just want to bring Mm -hmm. out a really large King James and hit him in the head. And I should never do that. But the the point is I have a lot more grace. Yes. And I can sit there and talk to them and and be gentle and loving, but also point out a lot of other scriptures that they're ignoring in, in a gentle way. Yeah. That... I don't think that would have happened had I not taken the time to connect first yes. with God, because then I wouldn't have been ready for that in that meeting. So I, I think you're really on to something there. With it, it's it's a wellspring. Everything else in the rest of your support raising it flows out of taking the time to to organize all of your calendar, but that yes. includes time with Jesus. And that's what I think we can lose depending on people's temperaments, right? Because we're all different. Some people, this adding time in your week, that feels fun to them. They're planning, they're organizing. The hard part will be for them is it doesn't have to be perfect for you to move on to ask. Mm -hmm. But for those other people that I would say more like myself, that are more like, let me just get in front of people, but I don't really want to put forth the time to organize. Mm -hmm. Spending time with Jesus first actually allows me to see this as holy and pure before the Lord Mm -hmm. and such a necessary component that I can actually take joy in when it's not my natural joy bent, if that makes sense. Right. You know, it totally does. Hey, let's just shift a little bit. I think you and I keep talking about this for quite a while, but let's talk about this side of when it comes to to time, when people, they do think, well, I'm going to just tack this on. I'm still going to coach my kid's hockey team. I'm uh, I'm still going to volunteer at the soup kitchen. I'm still going to teach Sunday school. I'm still going to, I'm still going to, I'm still going to, and we, you and I both know that, that there's an issue there because we can all kind of fight that Messiah complex when we're in ministry sometimes. Yes. But talk about that kind of stuff from a time perspective and what that says overtly or, or maybe subtly about, about, about your time and, and how you're spending it. I feel like there's so many directions I can go with that question. Like I can think of um, my own person. I can think of people I know, stories I've heard. It's, it's tough. You know, you, you hit it a little bit. Like we think, we don't mean to think this, but we can think we're really important that I lead this Bible study. Who will do it if I don't? Mm-hmm. I've seen beautiful stories of people stepping back, which was hard for them. And I understand that, but other people stepping in mm-hmm. and it's been just growth for the kingdom, which is what we want in the end of the day. 
I mean, there, and then I see people who continue who have a hard time saying no to family members. So they quit their job, but now they're nannying for two of their nieces and nephews. And it, it's that, again, that pure heart that is okay by nature. But I will say for our ministry, we've asked them once they've come on staff, they're in this weird transition where they are on staff with us, but now they're in this period of raising funds before then they go to the site. And that's the part where it's a tricky season because you've signed agreements with us. We've we've moved forward on you. We are now stewarding our time and resources in your direction. We require that as well. Yeah. We need them to be giving time and resources to say, I'm all in. Yeah. It's hard to see someone, I'm partially in, for then us to feel really good about, mm-hmm. well, what does that look like when they're on the field? Or what does that look like when they're on site? Yeah. Um, yeah. Some organizations I know have gone so far as to say, hey, when you're raising support, we want to be very clear. We expect that's going to be at least 50, if not 60 hours a week. And we don't want that competing with other things in your life outside of your spouse, your immediate family. Like besides that, this is your one and only job, if not your hobby. <laughs> like yeah. this is everything for this season. Uh, have you gone so far with that in, in certain people's lives or maybe even organizationally with back to back where you've kind of had to help people see the, the necessity? We haven't had any at this point processes or policies that require that or for mm-hmm. them to communicate it. We are pretty strong in our language prior. Okay. This is our these are our expectations and then we do set up different mile markers if you will or different percentages at different goal dates. And so there is a point where eventually I will say, "Hey, listen, I don't know if we can go further unless we see that you're willing to make some drastic measures." Yeah. Anytime I've had that conversation, Without a doubt, almost every single person has said absolutely, and they've done it. And I think it's they've had to prove for themselves, okay, this isn't as easy. Not everyone did join my team that I thought. Right. I I can I don't know where I stand with that. I still I like the idea of a policy and a process, so it doesn't feel like personal in a sense. It's more this is what we stand for as an organization, but we're just not there yet. Right. So we'll see where that leads us. Yeah. Well, I just I know that that. uh, that's a difficult one for a lot of organizations mm-hmm. because they don't want to be top down, yeah. you know, the driven, like, you'll just do this. Uh, and yet some people really want that extra direction. Yeah. So they go, well, no, now I know what's expected out of me. You know? And most people listening to this probably, not all of them, but a lot of them kind of have an option there. Uh, so what would you tell someone who there's no one breathing down their neck? There's there's no one saying you have to work 89 hours per week raising support. Um, but what, you know we're talking about time here. Mm-hmm. So what would you tell someone off the top of your head? I'm putting you on the spot. We didn't that's pre-rehearse okay. this conversation. <laughs> what would you tell someone that's like, Corey, how much time am I really supposed to put into raising up my team of people that are going to pray and partner financially with me so that I can go accomplish the vision God's given me? What would you say? I would say to them, please, please, please go full time you really will feel the momentum and the motivation to continue moving in that center, synergy direction. Mm. I will do a caveat, so I don't want to make you mad, Aaron, but I will put a caveat <laughs> in there saying, to make about that. <laughs> so this is what I think, this is my opinion, this is my skill set, uh-huh. this is what I recommend, and then I would say, but I really desperately want you to seek the Lord yeah. and figure out what is it that you need to drop away from. I can tell you what I think you should drop away from, sure, yeah. but what is it that you feel like the Lord is leading you because I want them to be fully bought in. Mm-hmm. So... I would, I would say, please do it full time. It'll save the ministry and you a lot of heartache, and it will be a joyful season yeah. with a little bit of sacrifice. But the truth is we're stepping into ministry. Sacrifice is, is a part of that calling. And so I think if they can do it full time, do it. But I definitely would say seek the Lord always in that direction of what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Corey, I really appreciate your time today. And, 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 we're talking about time, so I better appreciate your time, all right? <laughs> uh, but but yeah, thanks for putting your your, your focus and sharing some stories and, and uh, your heart and your experiences with us. I know that those listening to this, most of them will have at least listened to God Ask. They may have yes. gone through a boot camp or, or foundations, but at the end of the day, um, they're looking for some direction. They probably didn't read the email, much less click on the link to listen to you yes. and I have a conversation about <laughs> it. But thank you so much for sharing. And, and thank uh, you. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure and a joy to, to know that you're out there uh, equipping ministry leaders to be spiritually healthy, vision-driven, and fully funded, Amen. including with their time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thanks for joining us. We encourage you to listen and subscribe to the SRS podcast that answers questions and dives into topics relevant to ministry partner development. 
For more resources, browse our website, supportraisingsolutions.org.